We've hit 300,000 views in seven days. <laughs> We're going to teach you how to do the same. And Belky. You want to do that again? I kind of do. I kind of do. We've hit 300,000 views in under seven days. Actually, fuck. I fucked it up. Yeah, you can do it again. I'm not going nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> We've hit 300,000 views in un fuck <laughs> fuck dude these are these I I got the can you take it can you take it Just I don't know the hook <laughs> We're starting we're, we're, we're here the hook the hook is there it's the Patty Galloway dude. hook you can't go back negativity going that <laughs> you, way dude positivity dude. going that way <laughs> <laughs> All for Dude if you listen to this podcast you're fucked We got yeah. the giggles mid hook I got the giggles <laughs> mid hook yeah. Let's reel them right in pop uh, well, here's the thing, right? Okay, so Patty, we have this Patty call who's, I hope you're following the journey. He tells us, hey, how about you treat YouTube like it should be treated? Give it a nice little 30 seconds. Tease everybody what's uh, going to be, <laughs> going to be. <laughs> Dude, I, now I can only do scripted things. I can't even do that. Here's the funny thing. Here's the funny. Positivity, I gotta dude. Hey, positivity. Hey, hey positivity. Moving forward, moving forward. I can't do anything I used to do after the Patty Galloway call. I tried to make a long form video the other day. I was like, how did I do this for two years? Dude, dude, you texted me. You're like, dude, content's tough. What if we just didn't do content? What if we just quit? <laughs> that was like our only guiding North Star for two years. It's not was just fun like, anymore. we don't quit. I'm like, Oh, Patty's like, you need to think a little bit about your content like it's a business. And I'm like, <laughs> not fun. <laughs> Immediately. Get me out. Hey, but you're killing it, Pop. And I'm, that's <laughs> I'm having a ball, dude. That's I'm why we're ball. here, baby. Let me tell you something. Before we give him the juice, because we hooked him in the first 30 seconds, Pop. That was a sick hook, Let dude. me give you a yes, dude. We have this client. We have this client. I haven't talked to them in many, many, many months. Oh, yes, dude. And you know, at Clip.co, at Smart Nonsense Media for that matter, we don't do meetings. We don't do calls. That's We're right. We're all async, right? We save our Well, you, you wouldn't know that from going to Clip.co because we took off our rule book. That's right. That's right. We, hey, we don't know what Clip.co is, but that's... Mm, 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 mm. Okay, so, so finally this client comes on and they're like, yeah, I have all these questions for you. Can you, can you hop on a call? I'm like... I hadn't done calls in a while, so I forgot you're supposed to like ask them, like, hey, what's up with the call? Why do you want to do a hey, call? Hey, you need the preview. So I didn't do that. A couple days go by. I'm like, oh, I'm like, yep, I can meet tomorrow. Let's do it. She's like, nope, that's not going to work. Okay, a couple more days go by. So now we're two weeks out, and the call is scheduled for today. Uh -huh. <laughs> and like I said, I haven't done calls in a while, so I forgot to ask for a preview. Uh -huh. Like, what's going to happen on this call that we so desperately needed to plan for two Bullet weeks? Points. Bullet points. Bullet points. Oh, that's what I told her. I was like, hey, I'm super responsive on Slack. So you could also, because we're talking in a thread here, you could just DM me your questions if you want. I did say that. But I get on the phone and uh, first thing she says is like, so blank, uh, I'm, I'm filling in for blank and I'm now in charge of our partnership with Smart Nonsense Media. Put her on the phone with me, dude. That's me, dude. This is actually your client. <laughs> it's like, it's like so Referral bonus, dude. So, uh, yes, dude, <laughs> Smart Nonsense Media. We are not Smart Nonsense Media anymore. That's our Oh, flag. I forgot to say, uh, we sold out. Mid story, huh? We stole them all. Completely They're gone, dude. <laughs> Completely different point. Mid story, huh? Hey, I'll wrap this up. It was it was the second part of my hook. <laughs> Pop the hook comes at the beginning of the thing. Cause that's how you're going to reel in the viewer on your hook. No, dude, I tried, but it just... Hey, let me get to the point. She basically says, like, hey, I know you guys are smart nonsense media. We're not. What's what did you agree upon with this dude Bart when he signed on? I'm like, I don't know. Uh, she's like, we haven't gotten all the content we need over all this time. I'm like, huh? so basically, it's like we had a 30 minute call, and because I didn't know what it was about, I couldn't go back and like figure out any right. of the context. Of what right. We're talking about. So, so it's a useless call. <laughs> she's like, well, what what was the original proposal and contract with Bart? And I'm like. 
I haven't talked to him in seven months. There may have been one because it was kind of like Smart Nonsense Media, but we also pivoted. So there's 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 no proposal. All I know is he's subscribed. That's what I told her. I don't think there was ever a contract. Well, that's, this is where like, had she just DM'd me? Like, what 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 kind of proposal are we working on? Dude, it's the I ultimate have, DM. Sh- I could have showed up to the call, if we still did the call, I could have showed up to the call actually knowing something about what we were talking about. But instead, we just talked to each other for 30 minutes, which, which is sick. People hey, are sick. Hey, you learn something. People you learn something sick. every day. Uh, you you want another uh, we, expectations reality? You want to go into the we sold out or we'll come back to that? No, no, that's a thread. <laughs> the threads, <laughs> they just float. <laughs> you pick them up. <laughs> 40 minutes go See by, what you're, you're going like, to get. Fuck. Hey, I here's, to here's a reality expectation. A year ago, when we had friends in Chicago, one of those friends who has since disowned me, uh, they said, you should go to this nice thing called a Korean spa. <laughs> so for my Patty, birthday. Patty Galloway is going to be so mad, dude. <laughs> <laughs> the podcast is the same. <laughs> you had one bullet unrelated to the topic you didn't know we were going to talk about. I had one Korean bullet. At, hey, it's going to be 30 minutes before you get something good. That's why I never crack YouTube, I guess. Um, so Korean spa, she recommends it. And it's like, okay, it's my birthday a week ago, July 1st. Remember it. <laughs> <laughs> Belky and I, we're, I ain't got any friends. So I'm like, Belk, you want to do something? Because I, I don't really have anything. He ghosted me the day earlier. Because we were supposed to play tennis, and then uh, I just sat out in, in basically the parking lot for half an hour. Because uh, he's like, "Oh, I thought you. Oh yeah, I, I thought that, that was, that was for tomorrow." Uh, so you know, we're like, "Hey, I, I hit you up to do a massage, like because we're playing a lot of tennis. Oh, I get another tennis detour after this. <laughs> playing a lot of tennis, dude. And uh, and so I'm, I'm sore. I'm like, "Yo, let's go to like a sports therapist." And you're like, "You know what we should do? Go to that Korean spa." Yes. I'm like, hey, I like I like spas, Korean. I like to be diverse. So I'm like, let's check it out. You swing by, pick me up. And we kind of, you kind of sent me something before, I think. You seeded a couple <laughs> ideas of like, hey, oh, yeah. I got this snippet from the website. But I'm like, hey, I'm going to try and go <laughs> need the, blind. In the FA, I'll give you one. Just in the FAQs, it was a nudity policy. As mm. in, you cannot wear clothes in this place if you wanted to. You absolutely <laughs> cannot. I was like, right. That's inverse, of right? I've ever so that seen anywhere. Ever. I, I go back to uh, thirteen and a half year old Dylan thinking about high school hockey when you shower with all the eighteen year old boys, and uh, luckily this time I went through puberty first, so uh, that I was less of an issue. But man, dude, I'd take a dump every time before the showers just to get a little bit of gas in her. <laughs> what you, get a little bit of gas in what? Who's her? <laughs> Why does taking a poop get gas in her? Just so I could slap it around a little bit. Uh, but then once puberty hit, it was it was better. Uh, but no, that was a tough freshman year, dude. Uh, so it brings me back to there. I'm like, you know, what? we'll just show up and, and let her rip. We get there. We're waiting in line. And then you see one of the signs. The sign says, hey, there's a $10 fee if you stay over 24 hours. I'm like. 24 hours. I mean, we know some Koreans and I'm like, okay, I can picture them just falling asleep and staying here for like an extra 12 hours. But that was surprising. So we get in, uh, we're kind of lost. There's like, yo, put your shoes here, your shirts there. And we're walking around and like, you just start seeing a lot of old people. Cause picture this, it's a Friday. It's like 1 PM. I don't know what time it was. Maybe noon. Uh, weird, weird time, weird time. And, and, oh, I, I missed this. So we drive like 45 minutes out and we pull up and we're like, yo, are we pulling up? This is like the back entrance. Like there's a Kmart right there. This looks like where they bring all the food it's, into Kmart. It's literally like a building is turned around on the back of a strip mall. <laughs> <laughs> and like you see the backs of all the other buildings, but it's the front of this building. And it has like two lion statues or something weird, like just yes, going right. out into nowhere. So we get in, see like... The, this hodgepodge of people, all butt ass naked, and I'm like, whoa, I might gotta hit the bathroom, get her up a little bit. Uh, but no, luckily they're all Asian, so it's it, it makes you feel better. Kind of. Well, it's yeah. Diverse in there. It was maybe I, half. I black. saw one guy, and he was having a full blown conversation, yeah. just like this, out of the water, 
And I'm like, whoa, how many times you had to come Another here before you one, do that? A guy was sitting in the hot tub and his buddy or some random he met was standing outside that the was, hot tub. That's, that's the guy I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah, he was just leaning over like this. I talking mean, to him. He was a black man. So, you know, he's he's a little bit hung. But uh, might be. I need that kind of confidence, dude. If I can just talk to people eye to eye with my dick out. You know, you I made think, it. Dude. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so we just slap it around playing the kids pools for a while. Uh, and then after like 20 minutes, we get the call up and well, kind of the hot tub we went in the first thing oh, we do, to- cause we're running around butt ass naked, trying yeah. to get underwater as fast as possible. Uh, <laughs> we, so we, we run over to this tub that we presume is hot. It's gotta be like Dude. 138 degrees. Everything they just do to the extreme, they dial it up an extra it's 50%. It's so extreme. So we're sitting in there. You're like, I, my body is vibrating. My my, my right. hands and my feet are tingling. It's so hot. Full tingles everywhere. And you know us. We're like, we can't stay in here that long. We're going to have a stroke. So we scurry on out and we run into the next pool, which happens to be <laughs> 36 degrees Fahrenheit. <laughs> ice bath. No, dude, you, you missed the real ice. You still got to do the real ice bath, but Wim Hof <sighs> ain't your thing. You just no. got to go straight in the ice bath. You don't need the breathing. That's I almost an inside joke. But that's an inside joke with the audience at least. Yeah, well, that clip didn't do well, so... Uh, no, it came back... Well, it did 2,000 views on YouTube, which every clip does. But we'll hey, get to that Hey, we'll get to that. Uh, so we're playing around in these pools, and then finally, like, we get the whistle. Some dude whistles to us. He's like, <laughs> hey, it, it's time. And we're like, okay, that's dangerous. But, 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 but the dude who's whistling wasn't in this wet spa with uh, us. All right. We're sitting in the hot tub, and these guys come barging in. And they're like... They look like Olympic athletes, right? really scrawny Olympic athletes. They come in, they're like doing their stretches. They're like pulling up oh, their pants, yeah. getting ready, making sure they have all the towels Tucking they it up. need. Tuck everything. And it's it's really just two old Asian men in Reebok uh, boxer briefs. Right. But they're like, just imagine them like, just... Well, here's the thing. What are they one, stretching One for? was trim. One <laughs> one was like, okay, this guy, he he's like, you know, maybe he gets good leverage and stuff like that. He just, he's scrawny. The other guy looks like Slick Rick. He's got the, the beer gut on him, but you can tell he was muscular back in his peak. But now he's maybe 50 years old, and he's, he's just doing doing this one job. So we get the call up. We go over, and they, they slap us down. I'm like, okay, I got Slick Rick. Uh, he's really going to do a number on me. Do a number doing what? Well, they take out their little mitts. And their mitts are like these, uh, I don't know, mesh iron. I don't know what the fuck they Sandpaper. are. Sandpaper. Sandpaper mitts. And this is one of those Korean rub downs where they... I realize I've been looking at you the whole time. There's a camera there. Hey, hey, camera. Uh, all they do is they're like, hey, you know how your body is like s- almost six feet tall? And there's like a, a lot of, of square inches. We're going to scrub every square inch of that puppy. <laughs> square inches you didn't even know you had. <laughs> Slick Rick's going to find him, dude. And Scronbon, he's in there too, letting her rip. So you Scron just, they, they sit you down and it's like a massage table, but it's it's covered in plastic because uh, you're literally in like a, a water park for old weird people. And so, wait, right. So there's no privacy really between the, uh, the scrub station. They're like, why do you need privacy? You're already naked, dude. Right. So we're in the scrub station. All the old men are in the wet spot just next door. There's no privacy. And it's us on these two hot pink latex beds that are so Mm -hmm. slick. And we're just butt naked on them getting ready to get scrubbed for the whole room to see. So here's the thing. It's like... They put a towel over your head at the start. I think your your dick, like your your dorsal up. I don't yeah. know what door is dorsal back. I don't know. What I don't know. Just like belly up, and uh, and they put a towel over your head. And I'm like, yo, I mean, I never fought in Korea, <laughs> but I'm like, if I were a prisoner of a war, stutter easy, prisoner of war, I'm like, this would be it. This dude. is it. They put the, you're on a, a table that's made out of plastic. They, they put you on there butt ass naked, put something over your eyes, gag you, and then just skin your body. <laughs> right, right. You're like a cadaver. It, literally, literally. Uh, and so I was a little bit nervous. I'm like, I don't know what to expect. And it's just 30 minutes of getting manhandled. Dude. They're, they're like peeling, oh, <laughs> fuck, dude. They're like peeling you open. And they're like, 
Oh, did you know you have this crevice that goes all the right, all the way down to your butt crack? <laughs> Let me just grab that. your nuts and scrub there. Dude. How about that? It's literally, dude. Well, I don't want to. That sound effect, dude. That sound effect. Dude. It's funny though. Woo-hoo! They're just like rolling you over. They're like. They put you on your side. They like shove your hand up over your head, bend your leg up. They're getting in your butt crack. It's like, dude, whew. I loved it because they hit the butt from every angle. They did. And uh, front, it, side, back, side. And then there's like the dude, my guy Slick Rick, he's kind of like, he's been around the block. So he starts giving me a little rub and he's like, yo, dude, he doesn't speak good English. That also scared me whenever like I can't understand them. <clears throat> no one there. Like we first got there, I'm like, yo, what the fuck do we do? And this old Asian guy with the mask, and we're like, what the? So uh, he's trying to upsell me on this King special. He's like, yo, King special. Uh, I'm gonna rub you down, and give you the acupressure. I'm like, nah, dude. We're going to get the acupressure in like the massage area. He's like, nah, dude. I know acupressure. I'm like, Slick Rick, I know you know acupressure, <laughs> but I want it from the people that are actually qualified to do it. And so it, I, I got I got nervous. I'm like, yo, Belky, Belky. Belky's like, no, nah, we're going to acupressure. And then he just kind of settles. Like, Dorm. Dude, when we're traveling, you always get swindled like that. I do. I get it bad. I don't dude. know why. I don't know. if. No, here's what happens is especially with Asians and with masks on, like we got our toes done one time and she said something to me and I couldn't understand her. So my default when I can't understand anything in a language is, it, oh, okay. let's do it. Actually, Issa was <laughs> ripping me the other day. Oh, yeah, uh, girlfriend. Yeah, I have a girlfriend. Um, nice. It depends when you check. But yeah, right now I have a girlfriend and we were in Ecuador. And so her whole family speaks Spanish and my Spanish is like 50-50. And we get there and apparently I was talking to her dad and he gave me like this, this long like rant <laughs> about how his business works or something <laughs> like that. And I don't think I really understood anything. So at the end, like he talks for like three minutes. I'm just like, bien. <laughs> Literally, two, she's like, no, you did it with two fin- two thumbs. She's like, bien. <laughs> and, and she's like, my dad just looked at me and I looked at him and you're like, is something wrong with your boyfriend? <laughs> bien. So, uh, so I just do that with everybody and I get upsold left and right. But luckily, Belky was there, back me up. Well, right, it's dangerous. So you, you do the bien and then you're also really okay with premium economy. Right. Which is just like paying the most for the least. For right. the most for the better quality. So it's kind of a dangerous combo. You give them the BN and the premium economy, you're paying for anything. I rationalize everything, though. I'm, I'm stoked, dude. Yeah. I, I would have been happy dude. with Slick Rick's AccuPressure. Although, well, hey, I don't think we're moving on yet. Hey, no, no, I, I want to finish one thing. There's like very few select experiences in my life that are like, oh, this is bliss. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Bliss for me was getting a hard ball scrub. And then instantly getting a bucket of hot water <laughs> splashed all over you. Waterboarded, right? Because you'll be, mm. at least I was, face down. And he had given me like a head and hair massage. And then, you know, they're, they're dumping these hot buckets of water on you. And my face is in this latex, bright pink plastic table. And I'm just like. <laughs> <laughs> oh, really? I think my head was water. off it. So you were on the table? Yeah. Oh, yeah, you got water. water. But I will say about these nice Asian men. Uh, at least mine. What'd you call him? Lawn Braun? Scron Braun? Scron Braun? I don't know. Scron- <laughs> Slipped right on out. Scron Braun. Braun means not scrawny, so that's confusing. Um, uh, he knew how to treat you right. <laughs> he saw you like the ball tug. He's <laughs> like, I'm going <laughs> ball tug him a bit more. I'm going to treat him right. No, but it was interesting. It's like, wow, he's really done this tens of thousands of times because as I'm face down and my head is being covered in water that he's throwing at me, the first thing he do- does when he brings a towel to my head is he lifts my head up and he puts the towel in my eyes to dry mm. out my eyes. You know, because like when you go underwater, you do that so you yeah. can like see. I was like, oh, that's actually, he knows exactly what this feels like. What yep. this is like. Gets every crevice too. Every crevice. One thing I liked, I'll just speak while we're still naked because we, we get unnaked in a little bit. I like it because it's just like, hey, this is, this is what humanity is like. We're all meant to be naked running around. We don't want clothes on. But uh, this is everything just on. way out there. Speaking of clothes on, right after this, they give you a uniform. Mm, they give you a uniform dude, to bagger. wear around the re- <laughs> the rest of the spa. You're just a little Asian Justin Bieber. It felt like <laughs> it felt like all of the people in Wally 
I didn't. I didn't watch the that movie Wally. Oh, they're the all, fat people. They're all that, in their spaceship. They're all in like yeah. their wheelchairs. They're all wearing these like futuristic outfits. The same ones. They all look the same. That's cruise ship people. Yeah, and it's like we all go into the main room, which is then co-ed, and it's like all the guys are in their oversized gray uh, uniforms, mm-hmm. just like shuffling around because we've all just been manhandled by the scrubber, and all the women are in their pink uniforms, the same. And I was like, oh, this is like Wally. It's kind of weird. It was, well, one, it's like a casino, too, where you go there. They don't have windows to the outside world. So you're just, like, losing track of time, space, gender, uh, sexuality, everything. It's just, hey, here <laughs> I it didn't is. lose track of <laughs> gender. Well, yeah, when you're getting scrubbed. Yeah. yeah. So we just, uh, yeah, we go to yeah. the massage table next for the actual acupressure. And uh, I don't know what that actually is by definition, but I found out pretty quick. I think this is it. They sit you down. You're like, okay, this is a normal massage, right? Uh, they kind of warm you up, slap you around a little bit. And, uh, and then out of nowhere, you're like, yo, I don't know. You hear like a lot of creaking in the background, at least in my case, I I heard the creaking and I'm like, okay, something's going on. And next thing I know, I, I, I hear a monkey swinging from monkey bars. (laughs) Easy. Don't, don't call me racist. Monkey, monkey. Unrelated. The monkey was not the person. (laughs) (laughs) The monkey bars came first. Don't cut for context. Onward. Swinging from monkey bars, a human being. <laughs> and when they swing, they land right in the crevice of your shoulder mm-hmm. blade. And they're like, you know that knot you had in there? With Let me feet. stick my heel right in there. And what about the toes? You don't think those are uh, dex- dexterous? Dexterous. Dexterous, dude. They're going to claw. Dude, they just rip me apart. And I got a big, thick girl, <laughs> dude. She was ready to rip. And I don't think she had much uh, bicep strength. So it was all like 150 pounds, 200 pounds going straight into my shoulder blade. And I was like, mm. and that was bliss, right? I loved it. Uh, and then they got down and just went back to like normal massage. I'm like, it's, I just want that. It's funny. Like by the time we came out of the massage, we were skeptical about this place. We were skeptical about the 24 hour thing. But by the time we came out of the massage and we looked at each other, we were like, oh, you could spend 80 hours here. Yeah, dude. I didn't want to leave. You could spend all day here. There's a restaurant over there. There's the ice room. There's the oven you can go sit in. The charcoal room. The Brahma Nama Nama Those our, little our, cubes. Our Tijian wood room. Like, there's all these, like, the salt room. The salt crystal Dude, it's room. it's just people hanging out. It's just like an old person. Hey, just go hang out. They send you right through the system, too. You get the sequence. So they're like, yo, let's loosen them up. Get them swimming in the kiddie pools. Maybe scrub them down. Then hit them with a the proper massage. And then just have them chill. Mm-hmm. Split out everywhere, dude. Whatever room you want, they got it. And I was, I was just stoked. It's a great birthday. Uh, we should go back. More Korean spas. Uh, I don't know how often we need to hit them, but I still want to like a proper sports massage because my, my shoulder blades need some more work. Hey, what was this episode about? Let me crack. Oh, because you had another thread. Hey, it's all right. We're only 23 minutes in. Um, oh, another thread. Thread number two, dude. <laughs> my caffeine is gone. The tea's out. And it's we okay, haven't even dude. delivered on the hook. It's okay, dude. <laughs> Hard reset. Come What's this one? Po- Positivity is going this forward one? and back, dude. I'm Mr. Positive Horse. This one's about tennis. You brought up tennis. I'm like, did I? Yeah. This yeah. episode? Uh, I brought up tennis, actually. <laughs> if, if it's just me talking to myself. Uh, I went to tennis with Issa. And <laughs> your his, girlfriend, right? That's that's the one. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, so... <laughs> So we go to play tennis and here's the thing in Chicago, uh, the tennis courts, they pick two different forms of government. (laughs) One is like, Hey, we're going to be capitalists. The other is like, let's do communism. The tennis courts, the tennis courts, dude. So you go out back to back back to West Loop where we lived with crackhead, where we had a, a, a ball of a time. You know what? You're right. They have new courts there. The thing with those courts, though, is they're new, so they don't want to fuck them up. They're like, we're going to throw some locks on them. And the only way that they got unlocked is if you pay $15. You get an hour court, just go slap it around, and no one's really there ever. There's maybe like two people out of the four courts. So you, you basically, you're guaranteed an open court if you really want to play enough to spend $15, which for two people, it's like, oh, that's it's like a movie ticket's like $15 um, for one. So that's the, the capitalist side. And then you come closer to where we live, and it's straight communism. Because like, hey, we got six courts. Uh, some people, they're in the elite. They can just reserve it. And like fucking pickleball people, they're old enough. So whatever, give them credit. Uh, but the rest of them, it's just like first come, first serve. Now this is July 4th weekend. It's like, mm-hmm. oh, everyone's got the long weekend. They all want to hit. 
I'm like, I want to hit with Issa, but I want to also go like 20 minutes out to this and I don't know, like deal with that whole court scene. I'm like, let's try and figure it out. So we get there and it's packed, uh, all except one court. So one of the courts just opened up, but it's like 11.55. And technically the courts change it on the hour, so at 12. So we're, we're like about to head out onto the court and we're the only ones there waiting for the, the courts as of now. We're heading out there, but there's one, there's this one fucking cog, dude. There's this one, is a cog. I didn't know he was a cog until he spoke up. But the cog was like, hey, you can't go out on that court. I'm like, why? It's open. It's like, no, no, it changes at 12. I'm like, "Uh, so we'll just, we'll just stay on at 12 till one. We'll we'll just go out a little bit early. He's like, no, 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 no. Like we take everyone off the courts and then it resets. I'm like, wait, 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 wait. The cog. Were they playing on a court? The, sorry, the cog is an employee of this park system. Okay. So far, I'm okay with the cog, but they're being a little... The, the cog was making no sense because I'm like... Well, I like the cog <laughs> because when we play during the week, there's no cog. So the courts right. do not change over right. on the hour. It, it makes it awkward on you to kick someone off a court, whereas the cog is like, hey, I'm, I'm the, the law guy. Were they security in a yellow shirt? Yellow. Yellow, oh, so they dude. were Millennium Park Cog. Yeah, yeah. So he's okay. like, uh, I guess when they're busy on the weekends is what they do, okay. which is kind of nice. But I'm unless, like, dude, unless it's 11:57, can we just go out and hit? And he's like, no. I'm like, so luckily we got there like five minutes before, but say we got there like 15 minutes before and it's open. I'm like, so you wouldn't let us hit for those 15 minutes? He's like, no, I changed that. You can only go on the hour for two hours. I don't know. I don't know how the system works, but his brain just couldn't compute. Like it's an open court. They want to play, but I'm going to like make sure they can't play. Right. He's like, like he no, that's give, just how the system works. He couldn't give you an hour and five minutes. Somehow. I'm like, well, there's no one waiting fe- in I, line. Yeah, I got mixed feelings about the cog. I got mixed feelings about the cog. Get out of here. No exceptions. That is the, you know, if that's, if that's crazy system, though, it's a little crazy, but if that's a system and he can successfully, did everyone leave at 12? Well, no, no, everyone stayed on because there was no one waiting. So literally, oh, so we're the only one. It's like picture yeah, East and I waiting for a court and there's an open court. He's like, no, you can't go out yet. Okay. I was going to be like, that's a cool system. If he actually at 12 took everyone off the courts and recycled six new courts. Right, right. If, if there are like six yeah, people ridiculous. waiting, but then that's I'm ridiculous. like, so I'm like, hey, there's just a certain class of people I'm not used to that just don't think for themselves. They're just like, no, that's the rule. I'm here to enforce the rule. And I'm like, thank God I'm not a Jew because you would kill me because that's just the rule. <laughs> Nazi Germany right? If the camera could see how you're looking at me, it's kind of scary. Yeah. Uh, no, but cogs are fucking weird, dude. They just don't hey, think for themselves. that's a great thread. Thanks for sharing and thanks for tying it to capitalism and communism. I think that was actually a uh, good metaphor. Well, I, I think about it with Cuba when I went there and like everything's just line after line after line. It's just people waiting. Because yep. there's no like way to show who cares no about things more. Discrimination. But uh, hey, so we got through. Um, Same let's get back Disneyland. to the, the Same ho- thing with Disneyland. You can pay twenty dollars more per ticket and get like all of the all the stuff. But it's like so many people don't pay twenty dollars more. One thing uh, they're all in line for things. Sam Harris, he has this meditation app, and it costs like one hundred and twenty bucks a year, like ten bucks a month, whatever. He's like, this is the cost. Like, we just want to make money. But like, if you can't afford it, just email us, and we'll give yeah. you access. So it's kind of like the, the best of both worlds. I guess it'd get abused in a bigger system. But like for most people, they're like, I don't I don't want to just get like a yeah. free 10 bucks. Um, OK, that's cool. That's that's a good capitalistic. Communism. 30 minutes in. We're getting to the meat of it that I think that's what Patty said. He's like, tease for 30, then wait another 30, 30 minutes, right, right. 30 seconds, 30 seconds, wait 30 minutes and then come right back. Into yes. It. Uh, 30 seconds. 30 minutes. That's the formula. Make sure all the tea is gone, too. <laughs> right. Um, see, if you can get the, see if you can get the thesis for three minutes at the end. Should we? Hey, you're killing it, Pop. No, come on. <laughs> Give the people what they want. One, After all those threads. One done deal? I think. So we're on uh, TikTok. I think you got on. super stoked in let our me, last episode. Let me update it. 205,000 views, dude. Yes, sir. I love my 12-year-olds, so, so dude. you've gotten in, what, five clips? About 750. Six, six clips. 750 followers, three, 400,000 views. <laughs> right, that's so weird. Followers do not matter at all, or they don't convert at least. I don't least. know what matters. That's, so here's part of the problem is I don't know what matters. What, what is dope is I think this is one of one. You found the thing, 
that works, that's kind of like your wait, but why for video, for TikTok, for Gen Z. Right. And I think that's super rad. And this is what you texted me before. You're like, finally, stick figure finance yes. found its market, dude. Actually, though, it's like, so Dylan started this thing, stick figure finances when we were in college and all of us friends just make fun of you for it. But it's like, oh, here is it packaged in the right place at the right time. TikTok well, is here. You that, found the niche. This whole thing has just been a, an exploration of packaging uh, because my interests really haven't changed much at all. It's always been like kind of this. I first found Wait But Why way back in the day. And that's what I was like, oh, stick figures are cool. My first idea. Oh, this is how it happened, actually. So Tim Urban, he came to Brown when he was practicing his TED Talk, which I think is like the most viral TED Talk of all time oh, on the procrastination. procrastination. One? Yeah, oh, or one of the it. top five. He was practicing for TED. So he gave you the, the, yeah. the pre-talk. Nice. And it was only like, I don't know, 40 people in the room, maybe. I didn't really know who he was. I was just like, I'm bored. I'll, I'll go to this thing. And he's talking and I'm like, oh, I love the way that you, you take cool ideas and make them like fun and interesting, but still convey the message. I'm like, could you do this for textbooks? His textbooks, they suck. Like You asked him that? Yeah. He's like, yeah, I just don't have time. Like, it's a, it's a good idea. So my first idea actually was I, I came back home, I think that summer. So I don't know if it was like sophomore year. Came back home in summer and I'm like, oh, I'm going to do this for my AP biology textbook. And actually, I still have like, I think a chapter written or like just a, a couple pages where I like you did diagrams and stuff. I don't know, dude. It's deep. <laughs> it's deep. No Island one's next week. Um, I don't know where they are. But uh, so I tried that at home and I'm like, ah, this didn't really hit. Uh, fast forward like another six months or so. I am in uh, Buenos Aires in Argentina. <laughs> Buenos Aires. Buena <laughs> it's really hard. Like once you know how to pronounce something to go back. Uh, so I'm Buenos in Argentina. Aires. And... I'm kind of bored. Like, what do I want to do with my life? So I'm just sitting around the apartment. I'm like, hey, let me get back on the stick figure thing. I really like personal finance. I was getting into it. Ramit Sethi, I read his book and I'm like, oh, I'm going to teach Ramit, but in like a fun way, it's accessible to college people. That was called stick figure finance, or finances.com. I still get emails from stick figure finance. Like, hey, you want to buy our domain? <laughs> you want to you wanna buy it? I'm like, no. Actually, now maybe. Um, but it's the same thing. It's like stick figures, uh, hey, that's your next complex. Vertical. He's got verticals. Dude. Hey, watch out, dude. I'm just trying to go deep on one Smart right now. Nonsense finance. So I did that. Uh, that that just got ridiculed. No one wanted to watch it. It's like no one wanted to share it. Didn't pick up. So I was like, okay, fuck that. I don't like writing either. Uh, but I tried another writing thing. I tried the blog, which I did like the thank you letters thing at the start of Smart Nonsense. I'm like, oh, I'm going to do that. I also have this one about like getting to the top of a mountain. I had to go down and go up and like different base camps and shit. Like where <laughs> it was a whole thing. But I, I hated writing, so I didn't do it. Then I went into the podcast. The podcast is like, oh, smart nonsense. Let's just talk about this stuff, but I don't have to write. I don't have to draw. It's just, just like, write, write. just bring the fun, but like in person. And then that basically did nothing for like two years. We, we tried YouTube and like turning those into like clips on YouTube, some basically nothing there. It's like, still, this is going to get 78 views. Or like, yeah, it'll probably get like 150. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, I don't mean to brag, but <laughs> it might get 150. Um, <laughs> Because we post once a month. <laughs> so we do all of that. It's like uh, two years on like smart nonsense, uh, like two weeks really trying to like turn smart nonsense podcast into, or sorry, two years on that, two months on like turning it into clips. So we've been like time cutting, yep. seeing if we could just like repurpose this podcast. I'm like, yo, that shit didn't work. But then we spend literally two days trying to shoot for TikTok, shoot TikToks. It was literally two days because... You shot for TikTok. It takes two days to edit your first one, and your first TikTok did 150,000 views. Right. I was like, literally two days. Dude, we just spent two years just pulling our dicks on this, two months on that, and then it like finally cruxes to, oh, we figured it out. Right. Like, we needed, uh, we kind of talk about how that first six months of this year was wasted because we hired all these people. We had like 20 people just doing nonsense edits that didn't work, uh, trying to teach them concepts that they just didn't. It didn't make sense because they're animators and we're trying to tell them other stuff. We finally like get it ingrained. Oh, they are animators. As long as we do the rest of the work, they will make the best animations on earth. And now remember that part where I don't like writing and I don't like like going through and doing all the drawings and all that stuff, but I like the idea of that. Like, oh, that's what they like. Right. I just like taking the, the cool idea and making it funny. Like, that's all I want to do. And that's like why I'm so addicted to, to now this thing that has popped, which before we were just trying to force it, that, that, that square 
square round peg thing? A the peg that goes in the square round hole. So now now it's like holy shit. Uh, well, we kind of saw like a week <laughs> well weekend kind of the difference in uh, <laughs> the experiment. Hey, the competition's over. <laughs> I'm playing a different competition. No, dude. I, no, that's the thing. Cool. I got two videos on you. That's all it is. Because power laws is just like, you, know, you could put out two videos that pop. Yeah, sure. But right. your videos are dirt. Right. I'm going to get into why. Um, yep. Carry on. Well. I forgot what I was going to say. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, competition's oh, over. Oh, like, like it, it kind of gets back to this idea that like product market fit is obvious. It's so obvious. It's so obvious. If you're asking, do I have product market fit? You're, you don't have it. And yeah, I don't know. It's obvious. In six clips, it's like, that's going to work. And they're right. like, then there are small things within. It's like, okay, maybe we should use more stick figures. Don't do this thing. Uh, let's think about the hook. Are we crafting it? And like, those are small things. Right. The content market, product market fit is there. And it's so there, obvious. There's such a big need for it. Because I see, I look at, uh, we talked about this before, but big weird world. I'm like, I just want to do what they did, but forever. Because we, we have unlimited time because yeah, I don't do anything all day. This is like all I do. Uh, unlimited resources, like the bootstrap business makes enough money. And plus we have a shitload of animators and then just like unlimited interest. So the only thing that can really not work is if we burn out. Like we're the reason this fails. Right. Because the company works, like everything is set up. The machine is set up to make this work. Uh, but we sold out our business, so we also don't have a ton of animators oh, to work on Oh, there's the hook. There's the hook. We sold out our business, as in everyone for the first time ever is working with clients, and that has never been the case. It's really nice. It, it, what's interesting is seeing, like, I have all these bullet points, but my T levels are going down, so I'm trying to prioritize. Yes, dude. Um, yeah. Well, okay, one thing. There's a bunch of little things. I don't know. So basically, it's still like a crapshoot. Uh, oh, it, it's a total crapshoot, right? Because that's the crazy thing. You posted two similar clips. One did 1,000 views. The other one did 201,000. <laughs> if you... When we saw those, like, b before you put those out, we're like, these are two things that... They I look the are, exact right? same to They me. look <laughs> practically the exact same. They're formulated the exact same way. Freaking one took well, off and one didn't. And I you can't control that. Well, one, this is why people hate capitalism, because it's like very similar looking people on the surface, but like with one little difference, like say you're 1% better, that when you're talking about power laws, they get all the returns. Right. So like say Warren right. Buffett is maybe like 1% smarter than the average smart person, but he makes $100 billion versus $100,000. Uh, so same thing here. It's like, we can't see that stuff. You just got to throw it out. But it's like the ultimate scientist experiment where I just love just like, oh, we can put out an experiment a day or two or three or four or five, like just throwing them out there and seeing what hits and then trying to like analyze, oh, why did this one perform? And ideally it's kind of an A-B test like this. This is the closest to an A-B test. I, I still I, I still don't know like which one of the clips did better um, or why. Dude, but almost, yeah, I we, think... <laughs> You almost can't spend too much time thinking about... Like, that's working. Like, there's not a whole lot of A-B testing that needs to be done. We, we just have no idea. Well, it's, it's literally just like, at this point, this general format works. So just do whatever gets the quantity no, out and make, yeah, like, small no, tweaks if you, if you want to try things no, every week. Uh, your case, shit doesn't hit at all on TikTok. Right. Granted, I think I... That's the other interesting thing is we're posting on TikTok, Instagram Reels, and YouTube Shorts at the same time. So we're seeing like the, these three different algorithms. It's literally like three different software engineers wrote these things. Right. It's like we see what happens in the first hour of TikTok and what that means when it gets bumped to the next thing and then it hits 100,000 views. Instagram's always like five-ish thousand views, 8,000 views. And YouTube, we have never had a clip go over 2,000 views or like 2.4 thousand <laughs> views. And it's this S-curve. It's like so bizarre. Well, it's, yeah, and they're, they're all the same clips, which is why it's fascinating. I'm like, can you just copy each other? Like, you can tell that Instagram and YouTube Shorts are trying to catch up to TikTok, who has the natural awesome algorithm. Yes. Because it's like, oh, TikTok works in a power law, where your average TikTok is going to get like 5,000 views, but then one out of three in our case, or like one out of 10, whatever it might be, is going to get 100x that. Versus 
YouTube, we put out a shitload of shorts. They all get 2,000. Same with Instagram. Like right now, they're all hovering on, around that 5,000. It's like they don't know what they're doing. So they're just like, hey, let's just give everyone like 5,000 and see what kind of works better than most. But I also think there's like TikTok works in these feedback loops where if you see a TikTok and it has like, uh, I don't know, five likes, you're like, okay, that's probably a pretty shitty TikTok. The star is coming back. I'm just going to keep going. Versus you see now 5,000 likes or 50,000 likes. You're like, oh, this is clearly proven to be good. It's worth my time, like giving it at least an extra three seconds. That's what will happen is like once you get to, shit, I don't know how many likes. Yeah. Once you get to like a thousand likes, an hour later, you'll have 15,000. Right. And it's like, well, it's crazy. Overnight. So I went to bed last night because I can kind of see like the trend. So it's, I messaged the team. I was like, oh, Darren's video got 13,000 views. It's pretty good. Didn't perform as a 130,000 view one, but it's still good. And then before I went to bed, I'm like, oh, it's at 20,000. Like, that's kind of interesting. I wonder what it'll be in the morning. Because the last time in the morning, it went from twenty to 60,000 in the previous clip. This morning, I didn't even want to see what you texted me because I, I wanted to check for myself. It goes twenty to 100,000. Right. I'm like, whoa, dude, who's up at four in the morning? Like, I checked pretty late, like midnight. That clip might also have eight views for the first five hours. That's the funny thing, too. That one had 1,000 views for the first 24 hours. It makes you question everything. It's so crazy. It's like, wait, am I crazy? But then, so this is where I get into like, Jeff Bezos talks about measuring inputs, not outputs. And it's like, what videos do we intrinsically like? Right. We love the World War II one. I think all of these other ones are good. Uh, I haven't watched them nearly as much as the World War II, like rewatch them. But you can really tell. And when I look at your clips, it's like, oh, what do you put out that I want to go back and rewatch? Like, none of them. I don't even know what they're about. They're not memorable. Versus like, I still want to go back and kind of look at the traffic test or I want to look at the World War II, not just because of the views, but like, oh, it's, I don't know. It's just kind of like pretty to look at the animations and everything. Right. Um, and the topic's interesting to me, obviously. That's what I'm saying. Like, it's just a smash hit. But it's like, why is a smash hit? And I think it, it gets back to that made to stick where it's like, okay, what works is what's memorable. What's memorable is stories. So we just need to tell more and better stories. Right. Because... I don't know, like the go to school, I forget, maybe it was made to stick, I forget where, but they were talking about education in Asia versus in America. In America, it's all rote. It's like, hey, here's the problem. Here's the math problem. It's like uh, two plus five equals whatever, seven. <laughs> I don't know why that was like. But in, in Asia, it's like, okay, so you go to the market and it's like $1 for an orange, you got two and $1 for, uh, I don't know, an apple and you got seven. How much is it going to cost at the register? So they just put everything in context. Mm. And I'm like, mm. oh, okay, you're just giving them the two plus five. Oh, wow. I, I changed my numbers, but whatever. You want to go to Asia and give them like that, the story of you going to the market and you're buying apples and bananas. Mm -hmm. and these are the costs. And it's like, what does that add yeah, up to? We're going to Asia. Uh, so I, I just think like it's very clear what works and why, just because humans love stories. Like the Lindy we talked about before, it's like stories are the most Lindy thing out there. It's like, figure out the story behind the concept that you want to teach. Right. And what I need to figure out is, is where my content comes from is notes from my readings. So I have all of this material and I want to repackage those byproducts. I need to figure out how to repackage them in a way that's more memorable. Well, I think one of the, like my advantages here is I have more time in the day cause you're still doing things for the company. But like this morning, listening to uh, Mark Andreessen yeah. talk to Joe Rogan, I, I already have in the first 30 minutes, like three nuggets. And one of those is like, oh, in Russia, back in the 50s, they were setting off nukes underground. So uh, two cool ones. They were setting off nukes underground so they could try like an uh, uh, early form of fracking. Like there's all this oil down there. Can we just set off nukes and like then we'll get the oil? Turns out it was really bad but he, he didn't really get into it. So I'm like, okay, that's a good story. Mm -hmm. Cause like it made me take down a note and it's very memorable um, versus there are other things they'll say that I'm like, oh, that's, that's an interesting point, but there's no story there. So I'm not even going to pursue it. Uh, same thing. Like it's like in the U S there was this program. I think it was, uh, fuck it was, I, I forget the name, but basically they wanted spaceships and the travel in space. You know how there's like nuclear powered submarines and stuff like, yeah, let's do that. But like, instead of like nuclear power where we have this, I don't know how those work a little, reactors we're gonna set off nuclear bombs just have like a big sail catch the energy from the explosion and that's going to propel us through the 
uh, solar system or through mm-hmm. the universe. Mm-hmm. It's like, oh, that's a crazy thing. That's like very clear to be memorable because I can picture the sail and nukes being set yeah, off in right. space. Like that's crazy. Um, well, that's where I'm stuck in this Patty Galloway niche where he's like, you need to be CEO, bootstrap, cash guy. And I'm like, how many stories can I tell within that thing? That's why I'm like TikTok. Okay, for YouTube, yes. But I kind of, I like ignoring Patty because I'm like, he's not TikTok. Yeah. TikTok is like, I have 750 subscribers. Like, hopefully that goes up. But people aren't going through your channel. They're just like, oh, right. Randomly getting in the you page. There's no need to have a niche. True. It's just like, hey, my niche is like interesting shit. uh, And we're going to tell stories that are animated. True. But then I think about, well, what game do I want to win? Do I want to win the TikTok game or do I want to win the YouTube shorts game? And and then push that but to a YouTube channel. I think it's a lot better to first win the TikTok game. It's like Naval. He's like, yo, before anything, just get rich. And then like worry mm. about the other shit. It's like, mm-hmm. just become yeah, the celebrity, get like there. get people interested in you. And then like you can figure out how to convert that mm. into like what your actual niche is. Um, but just get success first because right now you're on the cusp of like burnout because you're putting out clips that don't work and like probably demotivating for the team too when they see they get 40 and I get 200,000. It's like, I'm going to switch over to team Dylan. I'm going to poach him. I'm going to poach him. Uh, but it's like, it's so much more motivating when there is success and it's like intrinsically fun for me because I'm like, oh, I don't want all these stories in my head. Right. Like people should know about them. Um, so just figure out like where are there stories that fit into whatever you're interested in. Um, Hey, I got some. Um, hey, that's good. I really like. I really like the Naval. Like, figure out money first, then worry about everything. Right. Else. Like, it's like figure out views first, then worry about everything else. Right. It's kind of like the, the person that doesn't do anything, because they're like, ah, why, I could do that? Well, why would I want to do that? It's like for me, I, I still don't know if I want to be a celebrity. I was thinking like, oh, it'd be kind of cool if like people recognize it. Like, hey, I saw you teach teach me about nukes in space. It's like. Not me. Uh, but it's like, yeah, I could think about it a while or I could just do it and yeah, like trying to be it. successful and like, oh, if we don't like it, shut it down. It's just probably not that big deal. Um, I guess these are smaller things, but I, I like the idea. Actually, I left our friends group chat because I found it was like, okay. You uh, left? Yeah, I don't know if it shows anybody that I left, but I, I dipped out of that I don't know if I've over been the weekend. Uh, really? We have a rule where it's like, hey, uh, oh, you're gonna be I, I felt pretty emotional. So I'm like, I don't like how people respond in this group. It's, it's net negative for me. So I'm like, I want to leave. But he's like, hey, you can always leave tomorrow. Tomorrow As came. Warren Buffett says, oh, tomorrow finally came. Tomorrow yeah, came. And the, the, the thing about the adage is you, you keep saying that. Like you can always do it tomorrow. As in, it, you can always do it the next day. You don't ever actually have to do it. And you're like, tomorrow came. Tomorrow's Dude, it, today. It was just, I, I don't remember like the first sequence, but it was like, I had a little brain blast where it was like, Oh, this is a really cool podcast uh, from Lex Friedman or something. You should watch it. Tom, you'd like this. One, Tom never responded to that. Oh, yeah. And then two, Ayus is like, yo, what's wrong with you? Really? And I'm like... Hey, I added it to my queue. It's in the queue. I'm like... The then, queue. then okay, uh, here's a transition. Then there's like <laughs> Tyler Cowen. We're never going to get off this thing because we only talk once a week. Uh, Tyler Cowen, who... He's this economist. I don't know. He's got like a big following on social media and stuff. But uh, his podcast is nice. But... He was talking, I guess, to Lex. I've just been going through Lex and going to like advice for young people at the end because he timestamps everything. So I just watch oh, everyone. Yeah, 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 it's yeah. it's awesome. Uh, so his thing was like, okay, two suggestions. One, find a mentor. It's like, uh, find your David Sachs or Sean Poirier or whoever it is to like actually mentor you. We don't really have one. It's a bummer. Number two, find a small group of people that are interested in the same shit as you. Like you just want to text them constantly about all the stuff that you're getting into, like TikTok right now, like figuring that out, like figuring out cool stories, business entrepreneurship. I don't like our adults group because I, to me, that's only like sports friends that are also smart, but like shit on the adults group is the the, the, the group chat. Sorry, yeah, context. It's, it's called adults. Um, so I'm like, yo, it's we don't. Interest. It's just me and you that have this interest. My girlfriend doesn't have this interest. It's like, I, I want like. It'd be nice to have a little group chat of five where it's just like, oh, I don't know, questioning things about business and like the world and like trying to grow online. Like it'd be cool if there were just more of us. Right. Um, and so that was his big advice to just like find your small group. And we don't really have that. It's just you and me. Uh, I, I got I got more. Blue? I got more things, but I guess I guess I guess we can I guess we can leave it there. Um, 
No, I don't want to get into the this oh, late no. in the game, dude. The it's what? too late in the game. It's oh. too late in the game. And the book's closed. Uh, <laughs>